So today I was told that I have a lot of self-control and I get these kind of comments a lot, like self-control while you're really disciplined and I know someone's gonna yell at me for doing this while I'm driving. I am keeping my eyes on the road, okay? But if I don't do it now, I'm not gonna be able to. So this is bursting out of me. I feel like this is such an important topic because it's a very nuanced energy that I'm trying to describe here and it's the root energy that goes underneath self-control or discipline that I feel like is whack. The way people are relating with discipline and self-control in general, what I'm coming across all the time is this energy of like force, this kind of um, inner critic, inner bully energy of like, I need to be more disciplined so I can be a better person right? It's this very force nature thing. And our little inner, inner rebel will rebel against this. So if your concept of like embettering your life in any way, like getting healthy, making better food choices, like, um, you know, doing personal growth, whatever is I need to be more disciplined. Like, and this has got this like energy of force behind it. You will rebel. You will stop doing that thing. You will avoid that thing. And then you will beat yourself up more on top of that by saying I'm just lazy I'm just not disciplined I'm a loser I can't do it because for me when someone tells me that I have a lot of self-control or that I'm you know wow hard work and discipline it's like it's like screeching record player I'm like that's not what it feels like to me at all it doesn't feel like some sort of like self-control or hard discipline mentality like when I go choose to go to bed early or when I choose to meditate and do a morning routine or I choose to go to the gym right I choose to make healthy choices it's not because I'm sitting there being like I gotta make good choices like I'm judging myself or something like I gotta have to have to have to I want to I want to make those choices because I want to feel good period and this is where we come into self-esteem self-worth and the reason I'm in this place and I definitely used to not be in this place is because I have done the uncomfortable work of healing my relationship with myself the way I talk to myself the way I see myself getting out of victim mindsets blame mindsets powerless mindsets like I have invested and continue to invest in coaches, mentors, courses, books, like whatever I have to do to get past a suboptimal pattern of how I'm being with myself, I invest in that. And that has resulted in me having a healthy relationship with myself and esteeming myself higher and having enough self-worth to know that I am worth it and capable of making changes, to know that you know, let's say like last night, right? Going to bed. I got kids. We're doing, you know, we got dinner going. My daughter's graduating this weekend. We're making lays. We're doing, you know, all the chaos is going. And I'm like, ooh, eight o'clock. Take my melatonin. I got to get to bed soon, right? And, and why am I going to bed? Is it because I'm like, I have to because I'm so disciplined? No, because I have tracked and noticed how I feel when I do that. I mean, I have physiologically tracked and I have tracked in terms of how my day goes the next day and I like it I like it a whole bunch I like how I feel when I go to bed early and get sufficient sleep and get up early before my kids and I have this power morning where it's quiet and I'm watching the sunrise and I'm meditating and I have time to start my day slow be off of my phone just be in this vortex of magic I love that shit I have learned that I love that and I want that for myself. So I'm not, it's not when I go to bed early, I'll use that one. It's not like I'm, I don't feel inside like I'm being disciplined. Like technically, yes, is that discipline, I guess. But the energy behind it is I want to feel good. I want what's best for me. When I'm, you know, driving around and I was getting, you know, let's say when I was getting out of my fast food lifestyle that I lived for most of my adult life of McDonald's, Taco Bell, Wendy's, you name it. When I was getting out of that even, it was, I want to feel good. I want what's best for me. So no, like, no, that food is not worthy of this body. 
I'm going to go home and make something. So was it discipline? Yeah. But it wasn't like you can't have that because you need to be healthy. It, wa it wasn't like that. It was I want what's best for me. I want to feel good. So with any of these habit changes, right, what, when we see these self-defeating, self-sabotaging things, these always boil into two things in my opinion. One is the energy of the changes, the energy behind the discipline or the choice to change is one of pressure, one of shoulds, one of you have to do this to make X goal so you don't look like a fat slob loser. It's an inner critic, inner bully, pressured motivation behind the discipline. That, no bueno. It's not sustainable. You will rebel against it. You will have self-sabotage because nobody likes to be like that. What if somebody right now was telling you, you have to do 100 push-ups and you don't want to? It's like, no, do it. Do it right now. You're, it's kind of like F off. And that's how you feel inside of yourself when you're coming at it in that I have to, even though I don't want to. You don't want to be in a, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to make myself. Got to work with the subtle energies underneath of it of, okay, what do I actually want here? I want to feel good. And I'm, I'm, I'm doing this thing. I actually want to do the 100 push-ups because I am pushing into what I'm capable of. I want to do it. I think people pride themselves very often on making themselves do things they don't want to do. And I'm calling bullshit on that because I'm like, yes, you do want to do it or you wouldn't do it. Period. You may not feel like it. You may not be in the mood, but underneath it all, you want that for yourself. And that is why you're doing it. That is why you are not learning how to play the trombone or knit right now because you don't want to. But if you're changing your food and your exercise habits or you're starting to meditate or sleep better, you are doing it because you want to do it at the end of the day, right? And when we really sit with that and we come into a loving energy of why we want that, like, I want that because I want to feel good. I am worthy of feeling good. I demand for myself to feel good. Now we get into sustainable change, right? So discipline, when I see people, you know, say like, oh, I'm just not disciplined. All I hear is two things. Either I'm, I'm in this relationship with discipline where I think it means force. I really want to do something else, but I'm going to force myself to do this. It's all convoluted. Or the other one is um, they don't really feel worthy of these changes. They haven't done the deeper healing work with themselves. So it's like underneath the water, under the surface here, it's this feeling of like it's not going to work anyway. I'm never going to get there anyway. So F it when it starts to get uncomfortable. So that's why you got to like go to therapy or get a mindset coach or at least start reading some books or, you know, do a course or something to improve your relationship with yourself, your worthiness, understanding that you are worthy of that and you can do it. But when you got this little inner bully, inner critic running the show all the time because you lack awareness there because you haven't taken a deep dive into any of this, that's why you keep self-sabotaging because your idea of living a better life is pressure the crap out of myself and under the surface keep telling myself that I'm not worthy of any of it. That is why I became a mindset coach because I got sick of just skimming the surface with people and they're like, oh, I just kind of stopped. I keep effing up every weekend or I'm not doing the thing anymore. And I'm like, I'm sitting there like can blatantly obviously see why this is happening. I'm like, there's a whole bunch of internal shit going on here that we need to address. And I know it and I see it because I went through the freaking process myself. So that is why I deep dove into mindset coaching, educating myself, hiring other mindset coaches, creating my own programs, because this is everything. This is the root of all of it. All this unconscious stuff you've got going on and you just keep getting the same results over and over and over is a result of not only your conscious issues, but your unconscious ones. So uh, on a, on, it's not like you're sitting there thinking, I'm not worthy of losing weight. <laughs> maybe once in a while, but most people are not consciously thinking that it's just a subconscious unconscious program. That's running the show is I'm not worthy of success. I'm not worthy of health. I'm not worthy of blah, blah, blah. So we got to get to the root of that stuff. So that is why, like I see all of this unaddressed and then people just want to brute force themselves and pride themselves on disciplining themselves into doing things that they don't want to do and don't actually believe they're ever going to achieve. It's like self-torture. 
So, the answers are one, you have got, if this sound, any of this resonates with you, dive into your healing work. Hire a coach, hire a therapist, hire whoever speaks to you, okay? We do this work in higher coaching. This is a, I would say, you guys see me on social media as this like personal trainer, nutrition, biohacky person. I would say like 90% of my coaching, once you're in higher, is the life coaching mindset part. The healing shit. We got to get to the root of everything, okay? Then we do the physiological stuff. It's like, yeah, you doing your training? Okay, cool. Any issues? Okay, cool. Let's tackle that. Nutrition? Cool. Let's tackle that. It's like, that's like the basic shit. Okay, cool. Let's test your gut. Okay, let's get that on top of Okay, what's going on with your relationships? What's going on with your relationship with yourself? What's going on with your mindset? Right? That is the root of everything. So if this is resonating with you, dive into your healing, your relationship with yourself. If you are not willing to invest in help, you are working with the same materials you've always worked with. It is going to be very hard to get anywhere with the same framework of reality that you've had forever that is getting you the results that you have now and thinking that you're just going to like fix it or change it. You need paradigm shifts. When I drop a paradigm shift on my clients, like it is a moment. They're like, huh? I thought you were going to like be really hard on me and judge me for drinking this weekend. It's like, hell no. We are going to love on that. And we are going to get curious about that and see what, what is actually going on. And we're going to observe it together. That is what gets you past all these patterns. Instead of just judging yourself, criticizing yourself, being hard on yourself, keeping it a secret, not telling anybody and just thinking, I'm just going to stop doing that. How's that working for you? It doesn't. Got to heal that shit. And then the second thing is like really, really, really working on... Um, do I say this? Just wanting what's best for you, right? So in those moments, those difficult moments where you're tempted to go in old patterns, think, what do I want most for myself? What do I want for myself? I want to be, I want to thrive, baby. Okay. I got this. It's like that. That's what it feels like. Not don't eat that cupcake. Fat. So that shit is never going to get you anywhere. That, those type of mentalities drive addiction and then you don't tell anybody and you're in this bad mood and you're like feeling all disempowered and small and it's like I'm never doing that again that is what addicts do so until you're willing to invest in some outside help at least a book at least a game-changing book where you actually do the little exercises at the end of the chapters or ideally a coach or a therapist or someone who's diving into it with you with compassion and safety and love, until that happens, you're gonna just, I call it the hamster wheel of hell. Over and over and over and over, you need new paradigms, new paradigms. So once again, to cap this all off, if you think that discipline just means you need to be really brute forcey with yourself and just control the shit out of your life, I mean, Welcome to hell. Everything's going to be hard. Everything's going to be stressful. And it's also going to be suboptimal. Healthy discipline is I love myself. I want what's best for myself. So I just simply choose this for myself right now because I remember who I am and what I'm worthy of. And I deserve that. I want that for me. Right? And when the suboptimal patterns come up of like, hmm, why do I keep prioritizing everybody else in my life and ahead of myself? I've noticed I only make time for the gym if nobody else needs me. Interesting pattern. Let me love on that. Let me dive into that. Let me get some help with that. Right? It's a loving, compassionate place. It is the gateway to all growth. You can not actually grow in an area when you're bullying yourself about it because you will avoid going to the deeper levels because it's a very unsafe place to be within yourself. So if I I ate like a dozen donuts last night and I was sitting here like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. Why do I keep doing that? That's as far as I'm going to go with processing that thing. That's it. 
I'm fine. I'm not even thinking about it. I'm good. I'm good. Just jump right back into it. Like self-denial, self-abandonment, self-judgment keeps you there. Instead, when you learn about self-compassion, and I would read Kristen Neff's book, Self-Compassion. I would do the exercises at the end of the book. When you come into a self-compassionate energy of like loving on yourself, like you ate a dozen donuts last night, like come here, give me a big old hug. It is okay. I love you. Why do you think? I wonder why that happened. Why do you think? Like, really, truly, no judgment, nothing but love. Like, why do you think that happened? Boom, answer, self understanding. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's understandable. Mm, much love. Okay, what do you want to, you know, what do you think you could do next time? Maybe I could um, stop trying to work late at night, or maybe I need to, like, you know, actually get a therapist or a mindset coach because like work is stressing me the hell out and that has become my new coping mechanism. I don't even know what's going on. It's all a mess in here. So yeah, I need to, I need to get a therapist or I need to get a mindset coach. Okay. Can you do that for yourself? Yes. Can you read that book that Tara chick was talking about? Let's maybe I'll just get self-compassion on audible and I'll start there. Okay, cool. That is how change happens. Not criticism, judgment, you need to be more disciplined, stop doing that, force energy. It doesn't work. It works until it doesn't. Or it works until you are a psychotic type A control freak that is, it's not a fun place to be inside. I'll put it that way. You can drive yourself to those places out of a pressure mentality, but you're going to end up like not in a good way. <laughs> It can be much more peaceful than that when we come into love and, and, and working through those low self-esteem and low self-worth issues, getting help for those things and coming to a place where now it's like, I'm choosing that because I, of course I choose that for me. Of course I deserve that. Of course I want what's best for me. Of course I want the best food going in this body. Of course I want exercise. I love how I feel when I do that. Of course I want sleep. Of course I'm going to go to bed early. Of course I'm going to start meditating. Of course, because I want to, not because I have to or anything like that. It's not a statement of my worth or innate value. It's something I want for me because I like how I feel when I do that. And I demand feeling good because I know my worth. Self-love. That is what self-love is. Self-love is I want what's best for me. And I check in and I listen and I'm compassionate and I'm safe with me and I'm understanding. And then I show up and do what is whatever is required to help me get past any sort of junk I'm stuck in. And I am willing to invest every little thing I got in it. So if self-discipline and self-control ain't working for you, I hope this has provided some food for thought on why. It's not about force. And I'm sorry, I'm not reading the comments, guys, because driving, but I had to get that off my chest. I got a full day. I got to go do an in-person podcast, client calls, whatever. It's the only chance I had. So hopefully this has been helpful. Thank you for joining me. Much love, you guys. Bye.